Shortly before the dawn of Saturday morning, John Fitzgerald Kennedy comes home to the White House. He had been the nation's 35th president for a period of two years and 10 months. The weekend, that was just such a strange weekend. It was like the whole, everything just went quiet, a lot of crying. We were met at the Northwest Gate by a, a squadron of Marines, the Honor Guard. They accompanied the President's body to the North Portico. They removed the body from the uh, vehicle and placed it in the White House in the East Room. The mood in the House, and I'm, sh I'm sh assuming the rest of the country, was just really as low as I'd... You, you just, it was very palpable. I said, they can do anything if they can kill the President of the United States. And it just sort of bursted my balloon about the idealism of the world as I saw it as a 19-year-old. As we always do in the ceremonies, we don't want to get anything wrong. And you're always concerned that four people, myself included five, uh, all head nods controlling our activities that, uh, and being the first out there, we'd never done this before for real, that uh, we'd get it right the first time. So there were some sweaty palms, I, I would say. The hardest part was trying not to get caught up, but you couldn't help yourself. The watch, and we're supposed to be there to guard the body and uh, to protect the body and to remove ourselves in such a fashion that we couldn't see the casket would be defeating the reason why the death watch was there. The family was sitting at the foot of the casket. Everything was in my direct view. They're right down here. I can't look, can't see. You know, a peripheral vision, I can see people there. I knew who was there. And then Jackie came as the last one. And when she left, she walked out and stopped and turned around. I could catch her in my peripheral vision. You know, it was the most forlorn look I think I've ever seen in my life. I mean, it was just devastating to me. <sighs> I took Mrs. Kennedy, the Attorney General, two of the President's sisters, to uh, Arlington National Cemetery where they were met by Secretary of Defense Robert McNamara and they decided the, sp the spot where the burial would be held and then returned her to the White House. That was Saturday, 23rd. On the 24th Sunday, the body was to be removed from the White House and taken to the U.S. Capitol to lay in state. I think it was a sense that what what can you we need I need to do something you know what about I, I can't I don't want to it's all over TV so I could watch it on TV but I need to do something and I think going down there to go by the rotunda was in some ways sort of like washing the car earlier in the day <laughs> uh, I wanted that you had to do something to keep yourself busy to keep yourself occupied because something terrible earth shattering had happened the crowd being admitted into the rotunda went up the east steps and they were in a large eight or ten abreast going across the parking lot up the steps and into the rotunda and there were tens of thousands of people uh, crammed around the capitol and they were all being ushered uh, into this line mrs kennedy and caroline were there in the rotunda finished the service there and we returned to the white house that was on the 24th on the 25th, which was the day of the burial, the body was removed, placed on a caisson, and we began the funeral procession toward uh, the White House. We were going to stop in front of the White House, and then Mrs. Kennedy had decided that she was going to walk from the White House to St. Matthew's Cathedral to uh, get to the funeral. We all recommended that she not do this because we knew that if she was going to walk, all of the heads of state who were there were going to walk with her. None of them would allow her to walk and them ride in a car. And that meant people like Charles de Gaulle from France, Haile Selassie from Ethiopia, the Chancellor of Germany, the President of Italy. All these people were going to be walking up Pennsylvania Avenue toward St. Matthew's Cathedral, which was a security nightmare. But that's what was going to happen. We decided that we were just going to informally be present as Dallas people that admired Kennedy and to go to the funeral. So we went, you know, unofficially, if you would. Judge Hughes arranged for her own viewing point. 
I decided to position myself between the rotunda and the church. And so I was able to see that dramatic gathering of heads of state, the Kennedy family and all that, just here to there. I was in sixth grade when he was assassinated, but the only thing to do, on, do at home was to watch the funeral. There was nothing else on TV with maybe two or three channels on TV at the time. You had no cable back then. And so I was really captivated because it's the most publicized funeral in history. I saw the entire group of dignitaries from all over the world marching to the cathedral for the funeral mass. Very, very emotional, I might say. Uh, very beautifully done with the military people on the horse, riderless horse, with the boot turned backward, which is traditional. I remember Black Jack with the boots backwards and just the impression of that, that uh, the rider was gone. The uh, boots reversed in the stirrups symbolizes the leader looking back over his past life. Well, when I was working with him, he was a middle-aged horse. He was calm, knew his job, uh, did it very little trouble. Certain things stand out from that weekend. I remember the, the mothers, the women, all talking about Jackie wearing a veil. That had not been done at funerals for a long time. We arrived at St. Matthew's. The body was taken into the cathedral for the service. I sat immediately behind Mrs. Kennedy. She held up very well until Cardinal Cushing started to call the president by his first name, Jack. When she called him, when he called him Jack, Mrs. Kelly began to weep. I handed her my handkerchief to help her. After the service, the body was removed and placed on the case on outside the cathedral. Mrs. Kennedy and the two children stood on the steps to pay their respects to the president. I was less than 10 feet away from little John John when he made his salute to his father. I'll never forget that moment. Uh, he was dressed in his little uh, baby blue suit and he held up his hand and saluted his father. That was quite memorable. The procession proceeded from St. Matthew's to Arlington National Cemetery. We got to the cemetery, up to the grave site, placed the casket, and then immediately took the flag from the casket and held it taut during the uh, graveside services. And there were honors rendered by the Irish Guard. That was a special group from Ireland that Mrs. Kennedy requested be there. And there were the flyovers and the cannon salutes and the rifle salutes. And all the saints to Christ our Lord. Amen. I ended up in practically the front row. Uh, again, I don't know, I just must have been pushed to the end of the front row. I don't think I was that enterprising. And I practically ended up in the front row where reporters were allowed and watched it in what I recall as a very intimate way. It might have, it, I might have been in a small cemetery somewhere in some part of rural America or rural Canada, because I, I had no great sense of Arlington then as the national cemetery with the magnitude that we now realize it has. It just, it, the funeral seemed very, compact to me at the moment. Um, and when it was over, um, I did what a lot of other people did. I went back to my hotel and I filed uh, for my next upcoming broadcast. And then I just sat there utterly and completely emotionally drained. And I'd heard this in the intervening years from people that you know, when it was over all they just broke down and wept. And I thought, oh, I understand that completely because I, I did something, I didn't weep with a sense of loss, I think, that Americans might have. But I remember being absolutely emotionally drained at the end and letting myself go. The services were held, and then I returned Mrs. Kennedy to the White House. That was the 25th of November. 